What's going on guys? This is Oliver, formerly from Response AI and a few other software tools that I've since exited. In this video, I'm going to be talking about every tool I use to run a profitable solo software business. So to get straight into it, the ultimate goal is not growth at all costs, but sustained profitability and this indefinite extension of my runway. So what is a runway? So it's, it's how long we can run the business without crashing out, basically. So in a one person company, the runway is not just cash in the bank. It's a combination of financial health, personal health as well. Um, you know, operational efficiency, that kind of thing. And every application, subscription, API, every line of code, that kind of thing. All of this is my stack and it's a decision. Uh, and it's not about having the trendiest stuff, but it's, uh, you know, the stuff inside my stack that actively actively makes me revenue. Now, every tool must demonstrate a clear ROI. This doesn't always mean direct revenue generation, guys. It doesn't mean that I, you know, put $50 in and get 100 out. A tool's ROI can manifest as, you know, significant time savings, which I can reinvest into building or calling people or having meetings, whatever it may be or as a direct reduction in actual costs. This mindset is a direct application of sound unit economics. It's a principle that basically dictates a business must make more money from its customers than its cost to acquire them and serve them. And that includes my time that I'm spending on um, the work. Now this learning curve is a hidden cost that can bankrupt a solo founder's most precious resource, which is cognitive energy guys, like your brain. Adopting a tool that doesn't align with where I'm at with my skills, it kind of forces me to spend less time building and selling my software and, and more time basically faffing around and, and fiddling around with someone's software that I, I don't understand. This principle is an extension of the founder idea fit concept that I've talked about before, where a founder's unique knowledge and skills gives them an unfair advantage. I know that I'm not very good at just coding stuff from scratch. I typically need help with AI to make beautiful things. I choose a founder tool fit um, in my choice of tools that leverages what I already know and it allows me to move faster with less friction, right? So in this big list, you guys can, you know, pause it whenever you want, but it basically shows all the tools that I use and you'll see guys that a vast majority of them are free and almost none of them are necessary. Uh, I think at the end, my total tools for running, you know, softwares, multiple softwares that run me thousands of dollars a month, um, it cost me something like less than $70 total per month to run these things. And I'll show you how to do it all for free. The high fidelity sales engine and demos. So Screen Studio, guys, is how I make these beautiful videos. Okay, so this one that I'm showing you now, I use Screen Studio. Canva covers my static visuals, so the actual screen that you're seeing with the text and the and the images. And for this um, actual demo with like the shadow and that kind of thing, I use Screen Studio, which costs around, um, it should say $29 per month, but if billed annually, um, it's about $9 a month, right? Now, this is one of the few recurring software costs in my toolkit, but it's only annually. Um, and you can also get it typically on a Black Friday deal. It basically adds like smooth zooming. Like if I just like move my uh, mouse around, you'll see that it adds some zooming and that kind of thing. I'm actually going to turn off um, that magic cursor thing. Um, hide magic thing. There we are. Um, and you can see that it's really pretty on the landing pages for two of my previous softwares. Um, the product demo was actually created with Screen Studio, which is really cool. Now, a high fidelity demo does more than showcase functionality. It builds this trust, right? So when you are trying to sell a software and you have this beautiful demo with something like Screen Studio, it signals to a potential of customer that you are meticulous, that the product is high quality and that care has been put into every detail. If my landing page looks beautiful, has a cool demo, what's the product going to be like? It's probably going to be pretty cool and pretty good. The modest cost of Screen Studio or other different things of Screen Charm, all of these, it's a direct investment in my conversion rate for customers to, you know, come to my uh, website. Now, I don't post my like product demos and stuff on YouTube. My target audience isn't actually browsing YouTube really, you know, for, for solutions that I'm building. Instead, I deploy these videos at the point of sale. So on the landing page or on a demo page or on onboarding, and that's how I get them my money out of it.
Now, the modern engineer shipping software. So my primary development tool, guys, is Lovable, okay? For a monthly cost uh, around $25, but it's free for five credits every day. And you can do a lot with the five credits. It allows me to create these full stack, web, full stack web applications using natural language. So I literally just talk into my mic or I just type in natural language, make this bigger. I don't like how this looks. We're building this and it works. I also use Cursor, which is a sort of AI native code editor, but I use it sparingly. Cursor's pro plan starts at $20-ish a month, but its usage-based credit system can lead to unpredictable costs and sometimes you get bitten, right? Now, my preference is lovable. And this is despite having around six years of coding experience. It's an illustration of the competency competency match that we talked about earlier. It's not about lack of technical skill. I think I have decent technical skill. It's about the strategic allocation of my most valuable resource guys, which is my head, my brain, my time, you know, my effort. While Cursor is an incredibly powerful tool, it's one of the best ever that I've ever seen. It requires more energy investment from me because it manages files and that kind of thing. It excels at augmenting a traditional coding workflow if you're good at coding. Lovable, however, is like this agentic autopilot. It basically, I describe my outcome, my desired outcome, and it builds it and then it understands everything. So it's just a lot less files to look at, a lot less colors. I'm instead just looking at what it's doing. Now, my workflow for designing is simple and free. My workflow, I find designs on Dribbble that match the aesthetic and functionality I'm aiming for. I then literally, guys, just copy paste these images directly into Lovable while describing what I want to build in natural language. The AI then uses the visual input from Dribbble to make a specific high quality reference to the principles of design, the layout and the style and they basically turns into functional code. This process allows me as a non-designer, I cannot design, to become a pseudo designer. I don't need to have innate design talent. I don't have to hire someone for thousands of dollars, I, but I can develop a keen eye, a good eye for what works and what my customers like looking at by literally just going on Dribble. It's Dribble with three Bs um, and just looking at what the world's best designers are designing. And then I just copy and paste them and say, build me something like this. Now, deployment pipeline, simple and free. GitHub, I save all the code generated by Lovable to a private repository on GitHub. It serves as my version control system and the single source of truth. So every single time I save something on Lovable, it gets sent to GitHub. GitHub is basically like Google Drive for your code. Now, Porkbun, you you know, it's really hard to get a free domain, guys. Okay, this is, a, this is something that's gonna cost you. You have to get a domain. I purchase all my domains from Porkbun. Their pricing is transparent. There's no like add-ons and, and dumb stuff going on. This choice is just ROI driven. It's cheap. All of the domains work really well and they're really easy to set up. Netlify. Uh, there should be an image or a video of me using Netlify here, but it hasn't loaded. I push my applications live using Netlify's famously generous free tier, right? You can also use uh, Vercel. You can use um, Railway. The integra integration with GitHub is seamless, right? I simply connect my repository. Netlify automatically builds it and deploys it to my site. It's a free plan and includes more than enough bandwidth and like build minutes for a prof profitable business. Now, before a single line of code is generated, every feature starts with an idea. So this is where I use free tier LLMs. For ideation, brainstorming, formal product requirements, that kind of thing, design briefs, I rely on the free versions. You, you can, I, you know, I, I, I buy them, you don't have to. I rely on the free versions of large, large language models, Gemini, Claude, GPT. My strategy here is pragmatic. So I, I rotate between these tools based on my mood or more practically when I just run into limit issues. However, through experience, I kind of understand their respective strengths, right? So this is just a PRD, a product, um, you know, a, a sort of deconstruction and analysis of Canva for me to build a competitor of it. Gemini feels the smartest for understanding context and research heavy tasks because it's fed by Google, right? Like Google is its brain. It's rich with information. And when I'm creating a PRD, it gives me like market awareness and what, how to sell it, that kind of thing. Claude has this beautiful design brain, right? So when I'm creating design briefs, Claude just understands what I want and understands and demonstrates an intuitive grasp of aesthetics, right? And how user experience is, is sort of um, uh, shaped by design and beautiful design. It just has a great eye for what makes a good looking app. Now, GPT serves as this reliable all-rounder, and it's a great backup when I've exhausted <laughs> my limits with Gemini and Claude. 
Superbase, how I get the back end of my database free again provides a complete back end as a service, which is built on um, what's called a Postgres QL database, authentication, file storage, all that kind of stuff, right? So it's free tier is ridiculous, guys. Like I've never, ever had to upgrade. And I've, I've literally made hundreds of thousands of dollars with software and I've never, ever upgraded to the, tw- <laughs> to the $25 subscription, right? So this is more than enough capacity to launch and scale a SaaS product to insane profitability And then only when you get to a substantial size do you have to spend $25, which if you're making $10,000 a month or something, just pay pay the $25, you know? So you see the plans there, you go through them or or pause, whatever it may be. But I literally use the zero zero per month uh, free plan. By building on Superbase, I eliminate the need to manage servers and configure databases and, and scale backend infrastructure, that kind of thing. And it's a perfect fit for my competency match that we talked about earlier. The native integration with Lovable means that I can prompt the AI to create a feature and it will automatically create the backend stuff on Superbase. So if I say, oh, I want a user to be able to save their profile picture, it will just create the backend stuff that is required to do that in seconds. Now, Lovable for the front end, an application logic, Dribble for design, Superbase for the back end, Netlified for deployment. All of this is kept on GitHub and it acts and functions as a cohesive load management system for me, right? A traditional solo developer would need to be an expert in React and Node and SQL and Figma and AWS. And they switch between all of these with complex domains. And that's why, you know, good software engineers get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars. My stack completely destroys this. It abstracts away from this complexity. It allows me to operate at a higher level, describing what I want things to do and what I want things to look like and what I want things to achieve rather than getting lost in the weeds of implementation and tech. Now, tracking revenue and growth. So payments and building for an exit, right? So for all my products, I use Stripe for payment processing. The tool itself is free and it just has a pay as you go sort of transaction fee. It's like something like 2.9%-ish and then 30 cents. And that's sort of pretty industry standard. It's just a cost of doing business, guys. So for say a $30 transaction, you might get you know, charge the 30 cents, uh, and then you might get charged the 2% of it to 3% of it. Stripe is the de- definition of a bulletproof tool. It's, it's reliable, it's developer friendly, and all of these AI tools that I use, like Superbase and um, Lovable and, you know, um, Gemini, that kind of thing, they all understand Stripe. So it's really easy to set up. The most important part of my Stripe strategy is structural. So for any SaaS product that I build, I intend to sell it, guys. I want to sell it to another company for, you know, millions, hopefully. For example, my new software, CapFirm, which is coming soon, it's going to be like an investment thing. It has its own dedicated Stripe account because an exit is part of the roadmap. Okay, so in contrast, my training business, Rosewell.dev, my course, it shares a Stripe account with other like miscellaneous projects and random stuff that I don't plan on exiting because I can't really exit my training. Selling a business is easier when all of the finances are cleanly separated, and that's why you should have a new Stripe account for a new software. A dedicated account provides this pristine, auditable record of all the revenue, churn, subscriptions, customer data, and that dramatically simplifies the due diligence process for a buyer if they look at your software and think, I want to acquire this software. It removes ambiguity, smoother transactions for it, and it builds buyer confidence because, you know, they're just happy that you've got everything sorted and in one place. Closing the loop, while Stripe tells me that I'm making money, it doesn't tell me how or why or where people are coming from. To answer that question, I just use DataFast, guys. It's an analytics tool that costs me $9 a month, and the small monthly fee is a crazy ROI because it tells me exactly where people are coming from. I can see which sources, a specific tweet, a blog post, a YouTube video like this, where where my revenue is coming from and this closes the loop between marketing effort and the actual outcome so i don't have to spend hours and hours a week on using x or twitter if it's not going to drive me sales right i know to double down on youtube if it's driving me loads of sales and if i'm posting a dozen blog posts a week and they're not actually sending traffic then i I can just quit that or reevaluate my strategy The tool eliminates guesswork and ensures my marketing time, which is limited, is spent on activities that actually contribute to my traffic and people buying my stuff. And that's a direct um, uh, screenshot from one of my dashboards for my software in the last couple of weeks. Now, a tool in the archives, I don't use this anymore, um, but it's good if you guys are thinking about it. Rewardful basically set up affiliate programs. So if you want to, you know, basically say, 
that for every person that refers someone to you, you give them 30% of the revenue, whatever it may be. This is a really great tool, but I don't currently have any affiliate marketing set up for my software product. So I won't go into this too much. Now, the X flywheel, so a paid acquisition channel that works. So I have a um, verified X premium account for $8 a month. You don't need this, but it does help you reach and it does help you get more views on your tweets and stuff. Building on X is a long-term strategy. As you can see, I've been building this since like 2020 and I've only got 3,000 followers-ish, but that's 3,000 really great followers. And the premium subscription is this force multiplier. It gets me more content viewed more and it you know it gets me more traffic to my tools with post bridge i batch create my content and then it schedules these tweets you can use any tool you want guys they're typically very cheap i like the founder jack um, i like how he builds the software it's very simple and this set it and forget it approach i haven't thought about what i'm posting for the next three months because i just know it's already scheduled and i can focus on other stuff like making youtube videos post bridge keeps the top of my marketing funnel full without actually requiring daily attention. I don't really go on X that much. And DataFast tells me if X is sending me customers. So you see how I can see how I'm building and then whether it's actually working. Free tier stuff, Google Drive and Google Sheets, obviously. And I use the free email forwarding service provided by my domain registrar, which is Porkburn. I create a support address like support at my app that forwards directly to my personal inbox. And this provides a professional looking support channel at no cost. Now for founders who prefer a more structured approach um, or want you know actual support, an alternative is Crisp or Intercom. Intercom is very expensive, Crisp is cheap. We used um, Intercom and Crisp for Response AI before we exited it and it's basically you know a really good idea. The last couple of stuff, so running the business for almost free, you've got Appify, which is just a web scraping automation APIs thing, it, it's a couple of, couple of credits, whatever. I don't really use this right now. For my personal task and day-to-day -day management, I use a free Todoist account. It just tells me what I'm doing and that kind of thing. And it keeps me up to date with things and effect it's an effective to-do list, right? Very, very simple. Summary of costs, right? You've got um, Screen Studio for $9 annualized. Lovable.dev, I'm currently spending $50 because I, you know, I code all day on it per month. Datafast is $9 per month. X is about $10 per month. Postbridge, $10. Porkburn annualized is something like $10. So my estimated fixed monthly cost is like $80, right? And then obviously there's the variable cost per transaction that will fluctuate from Stripe. And that, guys, is basically the end of the video. That's all of the tools that I use for my software, for building a profitable software business, and then going from there. And any problems at all, just give me a shout and take care.